My name is Jabusi Tole, the DCS for Technical Sciences Head Office. The lesson for today is hydraulics. And uh, the hydraulics, we'll find it in mechanics. Mechanics, if you look at in your guide, exam guideline, it's 180, 108 marks and it constitutes 72%. So mechanics fall, un, I mean, uh, hydraulics fall under mechanics. So it's there to composite the marks that is there for 108 marks of 22, I mean, 72%. So that is how the exam guideline is formed by this. Uh, 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 marks and this knowledge area, which is mechanics. Now, let us move on straight to our objectives of the day. The objectives are, after we shall complete this lesson, we must know what is hydraulics, we must know how to define thrust, we must know how to define pressure in a part at a particular point, and we must we must know how and uh, uh, use the equation to calculate pressure. And we must know how to, I mean, uh, use the equation of fluid pressure. And we must know how to state Pascal law and how to apply Pascal law. And uh, uh, the last one, know how to use hydraulic lift equation because we are going to do, uh, I mean, calculations on that equations. Hydraulics, what is hydraulics? Hydraulics is defined as a field in applied sciences and engineering dealing with mechanical properties of liquid. That is hydraulics. In other words, we have these words, applied sciences and engineering, dealing with what? Mechanical, mechanical, properties of what? Of liquid. In other words, we are going to be dealing with liquid or fluids. So this is in done with it, what? Mechanical, using hands. That is mechanical. Now we have examples of what? Of uh, hydraulics. So you'll be asked in an exam, state or give three examples or four examples of hydraulics system. So we've got the lift that we use when we go to malls or we, we use wherever that lifts. Then we have um, the brakes, car brakes, that we, the, the modern car now they are using what? Hydraulic uh, brakes. Now we have what? The steering, uh, hydraulic steerings, and we have hydraulic jacks. We have the airplanes, they are using hydraulics. We have hydraulics, uh, choke absorbers in a cars. So these are the example, but these are not only example that you can give. There are more examples that you can give. So these are the example for now for what? Hydraulics, all right. Now, trust. We need each and every concept that you are dealing with, you need to define it. What is a trust? Trust is nothing else but a force. Trust is nothing else but a force. That is a trust. Now we define the trust as the normal force exerted by a liquid at rest on a given surface in a contact uh, uh, in contact with it. So this is a normal force. This is a normal force a normal force exerted by a liquid and at rest on a given surface in a contact with it. So this is a trust. Now, we know we dealt in term one with types of forces or kind of forces. We've got gravitational forces, we've got applied forces, we've got normal force. So now, if we, we, we have a, a block seated on the table or placed on the table like this one, that is a block. Now we have a force that is acting this way. We have a force that is acting downwards. Now 
the force that is acting upwards, we call it a normal force we, because it's perpendicular to the surface. That force is acting perpendicular to the surface, we call it a normal force. Now we've got the force that is going downwards, which is the force of gravity. Now this force, particularly we're talking about this force, this one, the normal one. This one always act perpendicular to the surface. Now, I'm, I'm, here we are trying to explain what is normal force. Now, normal force is the force that is acting perpendicular toward the surface. Now, this is what a thrust. Now, a thrust is a normal force exerted by a liquid resting on, or, um, on a given surface, surface, right? in contact with this. So that force must be in what? Perpendicular. As you see here, this is perpendicular, right? Now, this force, please learn us, we are going to deal with when we go to area or when we go to a uh, pressure because we are going to talk about pressure. Now, pressure, what is pressure? I repeat and I want to say it now, we need to define each and every con uh, concept that we are dealing with. And uh, this definition, they will help you to accumulate marks because each, uh, each and every definition uh, is carrying two marks. It's two or nothing. So now we have pressure. What is pressure? Pressure at a particular point is defined as a thrust acting on a unit area around that point. In other words, you look at what? The thrust, remember the thrust that we have defined previously, then acting at what? At a unit area around it. Now I've got this two, uh, I mean, I mean, a picture. Picture number A, I have a boy lying on a mattress. Now, yes, the boy exert a pressure on a mattress. It's exerting a pressure on a mattress because pressure is having what? A force, it's having uh, at, uh, uh, where? At a particular area. Now, if you look at here, the force downward here is exerted by this young man. So that force, it's a little force. It does not show much pressure in this mattress because the boy is just lying there. But there is a pressure, but the pressure here is so little. But if you go to uh, picture number two, or B, you can see that when the boy is standing on the mattress, now the pressure here, exerted here, it's higher than the one that it's lying. So at this area, there is, this is the area, there is a pressure down, I mean, the force exerted downward. That is causing what? A pressure, because a pressure is what? An, a force over area. Now, we are saying, therefore, if we talk about the pressure, we are talking about two quantities. We are talking about pressure equals to force, which is the thrust over area. This is what you need to know. Because we are talking about the thrust, which is this force, and we are talking about the area unit area. So this is going to be the formula. It is the formula to calculate what? The pressure. Now, once you have a formula to calculate the pressure, you must know what the SI unit. After calculation, your magnitude or your answer must have what? SI unit. Without SI unit, you are going to forfeit a mark. Now, what is an SI unit of a pressure? Now, it's easy to get an SI unit. You get it from the quantities. Now you say, what is an SI unit of force? It is a Newton. What is an SI unit of an area? It's meter square. You know, when they put tiles at home, they calculated the area, they charge you with meter square, right? That is an area. But now, how do you write, therefore, the SI unit of the pressure. We say pressure is Pascal or it's Newton 
uh, per meter squared. Per meter squared or per square meter. Per square meter. So that is Newton. I mean, uh, I mean uh, the SI unit of what? Of pressure. You can write it Pascal or you can write it as Newton per meter squared or per square meter. It is correct if you say per square meter. So you write it as per, per square meter, Newton per square meter. This is your SI unit for calculating the pressure. So as I've, uh, I've, I have written there. So we are going to use this formula to calculate pressure. We are going to use it because once you have a formula, you must do what? You must be able to calculate. Let's go to um, calculation. Example number one. It says calculate the pressure, calculate a pressure of an object of a mass. Calculate what? A pressure. We are given what you need to calculate. We are giving what? A, a, a mass of an object in what? In kilogram, 60 kilogram, and exerted on an area of this 0, 0,6 uh, meter squared. So now we are given the quantities that we need to use to calculate pressure. What do we know about pressure? We know that for us to calculate pressure, we must have P equals to F over A. Right, let us check on what we are given now. Do we have P? Yes, this is P. Do we have F? No, we are not having F, but we are having, instead of uh, F, we are having what? A mass. Do we have an area? Yes, we have an area. Then if you calculate in most cases, or in, yes, in most cases, you must have two knowns and one unknown. It is very important, two known and one unknown. The unknown is the one that we are going to calculate. Now, what do we know about this? Once you have a mass, we know that F is equal to a weight. Or you can uh, write it as like this, all right? Gravitational force. Now, what is gravitational force? Weight is mg. Now, this is where the, our mass is going to work. This is where our, our mass is going to work. Now, now, therefore, we can say our formula, therefore, is going to be P equals to mg over A. Now, what is the value of your mass? The value of the mass that you are given, we are given as what? As 60 kilogram multiplied by, what is the value of G? Always the value of G of gravity is 9,8 meters per second squared. That is the value of G, the value of gravity. You'll be given in your data sheet or content sheet that value, you don't have to claim it. You'll get it at the back of the question paper. That value is always there. So now, you have this value. We'll substitute the value there, 9,8. Then we multiply. Let's go to our calculator and try to get an answer. It's 60 multiplied by 9,8. It gives us. I hope we are getting the same answer. It's 588. Now, what is, um, oh, let's, um, we need to divide. Yes, we need to divide first. We need to divide before. Now, we divide by, 
we divide by our area because we are here. We are, we are going with an area. We divide our area, which is 6, comma, 0, comma, 6, all right? It's 0, comma, 6, that's our area. Then we go for an answer now. Then we've got 60, we, we should, it, it has give us 588 eight over, now with um, six, co zero comma six, then what is going to be the answer? Then divide by zero comma six, then the answer it's nine eighty. What is the SI unit for a pressure? Remember, we have calculating a pressure. It's Pascal. This is the answer for number one. So this is the answer for number one. We've calculated the pressure using this one. So don't be stuck when you don't have a force. Remember, you can twist the force to become what? The, the weight, because force is equal to the weight. Then once you have an M, or you have a, I mean a mass, then you can take your force I mean, as your weight downwards. Then you cal can calculate what is required of you. Now, number two. A test tube with a, di a, a diameter of four centimeter is deep into the water. The pressure at the end of the test tube is, now the pressure, we are given that we are given the diameter, remember the diameter. Now, once you are given the diameter, we must be careful, eh? Must be careful with the diameter, we'll discuss it. Now, we are given what? The pressure of 120 kilopascals. Now, they want us to calculate what? The thrust, the force. They want us to calculate the thrust, the force. Now, remember, Always keep in mind, the formula for this is P equals to F over A. Let us look at it. What they need us to calculate? They need us to calculate the force, not the pressure, because we are given the pressure of 120 kilopascals. Now, for us to calculate the force, we must have an area, we must have what? A pressure. But now here, there's nothing that been mentioned about the area. That is the challenge. But now we are given what? The diameter. And that diameter can help us to calculate the area. How? The formula to calculate area is A equals to pi r squared. This is the formula to calculate area. In other words, we need to calculate area first, then we come back, then we, we do the what we are requested to, to calculate. Now, the challenge here, we are given the, the, the diameter. And the formula for area, it says pi radius, it pi diameter, it pi radius. Now, we need to change, or we need to calculate the radius using what? The diameter. Now, how do you go about? We are going to say radius equals to Diameter over two. Diameter means two halves. If you have got a cycle, a cycle like this. So you've got a radius from the circumference to a center. It's a radius, the circumference to a center. So this line passing the center is what? A radius, right? Uh, sorry, a diameter. This is a radius, this is a radius. We have two radii. Now two radii, they form what? a diameter, but we don't want diameter, we want what? Radius, in other words, we are going to half it. So that's why we divide by two. Maybe we, we, we understand each other in that form. Now, let us uh, quickly calculate, then what diameter we are given here? We are given four over two. What is going to be our radius, therefore, is going to be, our radius is going to be two centimeter. This is what we got. Now, you cannot calculate with centimeter. The, that it's not allowed. We calculate using meters. So we need to convert the centimeters into meters. And we need to convert the kilopascals into what? Into 
pascals. We don't use kilo pascals when we calculate, we use pascals. Now, conversion, remember the grade 10 work, it's very important, it's inapplicable now. You need to apply it, you need to use it, it's pascals. Now, um, how do you um, convert two centimeters into meters? Uh, it's going to be two divided by centimeters 100. Now, this it gives you 100 goes how many times into two? Zero, comma, you put another zero. 100 goes how many times into 20? Zero, you put another zero there. 100 goes how many, uh, how many times into 200? Then it gives you two. The answer is what? 0, 0,02 meters. All right? 0, 0,02 meters is what now you are having there. It's what you are going to use as your what? Your distance. All right? Now we can calculate now our radius. Now A is equals to the value of pi is always 3,14. That is the value of pi. You can take the calculator, you can get the value of pi. The value of pi is zero, I mean, so 3,14 multiplied by, now you have your distance in what? 0, 0,02. Now, the mistake that the NASA are doing, they forget the square. Once you forget the square, your answer is going to be completely wrong. So it's advisable that put this into brackets, and then you put that square there because it's square, so it's very important. Then we go to calculations. Now we have um, 3 comma 1 4 multiplied by 0 comma 0 2 squared. Then it gives us 0 comma Zero, zero, one, two, five, six. What is an uh, SI unit of an area? It's meter squared. Now we have calculated the area. Now we can quickly go into calculating what? Uh, calculating this. Now we, we say we want F over a, what do you have now? What do you have now? We've got the area, okay? We've got the P, and uh, we want what now? We want the F. Now, it's going to be, don't do the subject of the formula because the, it confuses. Substitute in an original formula. That will be easy. Don't change any form, I mean, a, a, a subject, and you make a subject of the formula. Do it as it is. Now, you've, you are giving the pressure of 100, I mean, uh, 120 kilopascals. Now, you must change the kilopascals. You must multiply 120 by 1,000. Kilo means what? 1,000. Kilo, this one, means 1,000. Now, we are going to say 120 multiplied by 1,000, which is 120 multiply by a thousand, it gives you all right, equals to this is what want, they say you must calculate the force, you don't have the value. Calculate the trust, the force. Now you've got the value of an area, we have calculated an area as what? The area we cal calculated as 0, 0, 0, 0,001256. This is the, the value that we have. Now, from here, what we are going to do, we are going to cross multiply. Cross multiply, this one's going to multiply this one because we've got a equal sign. So this is going to multiply this one. So let us go there. Now, in other words, it's going to be force 
equals to, um, let's go back a bit so that you, we, we, we get the answer, uh, multiply by 0, 0,0012 five six right the force that they need the force that they need is one fifty comma seven two newton this is in newton that is the force that they need that is the answer that is needed today because they wanted you to calculate what the force Right. Uh, these are the solutions. Then I've done it. I've calculated already. Right. Wait. Now we are coming to the factors. There are five factors of fluid pressure. Five factors of fluid pressure. Your five letters of fluid pressure will start with number one until the fifth one. I'm going to just do it quick because you must know, just name it. They can say name five factors of fluid uh, uh, pressure. So number one is fluid pressure is directly proportional to what? Density of the fluid. So these are the com uh, compounds and uh, these are the density. Now look at the, the density of water. The density of water is what? A thousand. So these are the just, these are the compounds, these are the density. So the fluid pressure, fluid pressure is directly proportional to what? To the density that you need to, to understand. Right. Uh, number two, pressure is exert, uh, pressure exerted by fluid is the result of what? Of weight. Now, pressure, this pressure, remember we're talking about fluid pressure, it's supposed to be fluid pressure exerted by fluid. All right? Is of a result of what? Of a weight. Now, if you look at here, if we, we, we say um, area, area we know is equals to force over, I mean, sorry, pressure, not area, pressure, P is equals to force over area. Now we've got pressure equals to, which is force over area. But now that area, that, that, that uh, uh, force or, sorry, pressure, that pressure that we have is the one that is influenced by what? By what? A weight. So the weight, the, immediately the pressure that goes down there, it's influenced what? by what? A weight downwards. This is the weight downwards. So pressure exerted by a fluid is the result of what? Of the weight. So that's, that's number two that you need to know. Number three, the fluid pressure is the same size in all the, uh, the depth. So the fluid pressure that we are talking about, this fluid pressure is the same in all the depth. What, what, what do you mean by the depth? Within all this at the bottom is the same. The fluid pressure at the bottom here is the same, irrespective of the size of the container or the container. But the fluid pressure is the same at the bottom. That is number three. Then the other one is that the fluid pressure is directly proportional, directly proportional to the depth. Now, this is very important. The fluid pressure is directly proportional to what? To the depth. Now, if you look at this one, the pressure at the top here is very less than the pressure at the bottom here. Now, you can see, if you put water here, the pressure here, it falls just nearer because the pressure is less. But the, the, the deeper it goes, the pressure is higher at the bottom, as we said it, it's higher. That's why you can see this split there. It's far from the hole because the pressure is higher. So the pressure is becoming higher at the bottom than at, uh, uh, at um, the top. So it's very important. So it means, therefore, free pressure is directly proportional to what? Uh, 
to the depth. So it's very important, this one. Uh, we feel this one, fluid pressure is not dependent on the size. It does not depend on the size or the shape of the container. Right, we've got different shape of the containers here. So the fluid pressure is not depend on this container. So we've got, but the level will be the same in all containers. So the three containers, we've got the wide one, we've got the bigger, we've got the one with a, a, a slinger one. So the, the level of it is the same, but it does not depend on the size or on the shape. That is the fluid pressure. Then we, we go to the fluid pressure formula or equation. Now, we have an equation to calculate a fluid pressure, which is P equals to density gravity times gravity times a, a height. So this is the formula to calculate a fluid pressure. In other words, fluid pressure at the point is density is equals to density multiplied by gravitational force, which is that G, multiplied by a height. This is the formula, and you'll get this formula where in your data sheets. Now, what is very important is what? Is to apply the formula. How to calculate using what? The formula is very important. So this it is. We know by now what is the SI unit of a pressure which is Pascal or Newton uh, per square meter. So that is the uh, uh, um, 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 SI unit of a pressure. Now, we need to apply to calculate. Now, what is gonna happen? They can say to you, calculate the pressure. Now you'll be given the density. You'll be given what? A gravitational force. You'll be given what? A height. So in other words, you need to be given that. Or else they can say calculate uh, the height, want you to calculate the height, you must be given what? A pressure, you must be given what? A density, and uh, we know the gravity, the gravitational uh, uh, force, the value of gravitational force. Now, let us apply it quickly. Now, we've got this example that we are going to uh, 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 deal with. The, the diver jumps into the pool, the water exerts a pressure on the diver uh, when it is this distance. This is a distance, 20 meters below the surface. Water has a density of what? A thousand kilogram per cubic meter. Now calculate what? The pressure exerted on the diver. Now, we are going to do it quick. I want us to do it quick. Now. To calculate the pressure, we need to do what? To have uh, the density, the gravity, and the height. Now, what we are given? We are given here the density. We are given, we are given what? The distance of 20. Then we, are, uh, we need to calculate a pressure. Fortunate enough, we know what is the value of G. What is the value of G? 9,8 meters per second squared. Sorry, squared. So the, everything is given then. It's easy. Now, the density, our density, what, what we're given is 1,000 multiplied by 9,8 multiplied by what? The height that we're given is 20. Fortunately, our height that we're given, it's in meters. We need to check that the height is in meters all the time so that we not use centimeters, uh, 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 millimeters. So we use meters. So fortunately here is in what? Meters, right? We calculate. We have 1,000 multiplied by 9,8 multiplied by 20. Then the fluid pressure that we have is nine one uh, one nine six thousand. Then what is the SI unit for a pressure? We said is 
Pascha. Or Newton per square meter. So you don't have to write both of them. You can write either Pascal or this one. It suffices. That is the answer for number 2.1. Now let us go to 2.2. Calculate the increase in pressure when the diver goes uh, much deeper in four meters. Now they've increased the distance, four meters. The value is still the same. We are still having what? The density. For you to calculate, you need what? The density. You need what? The force of gravity. You need what? The distance or the height. Now we are still give, having this one. Then the 4.2 will be P equals to P for pressure. This P is for density and then G over H. Now, the density is still the same, which is a thousand. Then times the gravitational force is still the same, is nine comma eight. But now, what changes is what? Yes, the distance of four, because now we're using four. Now, then we calculate. It's thousand multiply by 9,8, multiply by 4. Then it gives us 39,200. Now, you can't leave your answer in that one, then you'll forfeit your marks. Out of three, you'll get two. So you need what? SI unit. Now, what is an SI unit? Still, we're calculating what? Pressure. Pressure is what? It's Pascal. So we have calculated the number two. Now, let us go to this one. Calculate the total pressure below the surface when the height is 24. Now, because they are giving 24, it doesn't mean that you start again to say pressure is equal to uh, 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 density times gravity times height because the height is 24. No. Now, if you can check, you've got... Uh, 20 here, which is the distance, and then you've got four there. If you add the two, it gives what? 24. In other words, you add the answers that we write. And it's going to be uh, total pressure, it's equals to the distance of 20 plus the distance of four, right? Which is 24, isn't it so? is what they want you to, to get. Now, if we go back, we got this one as nine, uh, one nine, six thousand. Uh, then we, we, we can say one nine plus 39. Then we add the two plus then our answer here, the total that they want is two, three, five, two thousand. Then it's still what? Two hundred, sorry, a uh, Pascal. So this is what they wanted us to calculate here. So in other words, you add the answer from there to there, then you get what? The total there. Now, we have to go to uh, the other one. So this one is going to be yours to practice. So I'm not going to do this one, it's yours to practice. But this one, it says, the sea diver experiences the pressure of this one. This is what you get, the pressure. Then you must convert the pressure into Pascal, not kilopascal. The depth that you are given is that one. They want you to calculate what? The 
the, the density of it. They want you to calculate the density. So you'll be given this. You can use this one. It's easy. It, you take the formula P equals to uh, density over G over H. Then you've got this one. You are given this one then we are given this one, you know the value of this one. Then the one unknown that you don't want, uh, you don't know, you are going to divide by this one, you get the answer. So now this is for you to do. Now let us move to hydraulic, uh, the Pascal law. Pascal law is very important. It's true or nothing in the exam. It state, they will say state Pascal law. It states thus, in a continuous liquid the e at equilibrium, the pressure applied at the point uh, is transmitted equally at the other part. I'm going to explain this when we are dealing with the hydraulic lift. But this uh, law, it applies in what? Hydraulic lift. Now, what is very important here? The pressure that applied at one part is equal when it's uh, transmitted into the other part. That is very important that you need to know. So you must state the law as it is. This is from the exam guideline, this law. Remember, we don't use textbooks, any textbooks when we define or we state laws. We use the exam guideline. So it's stated like this in the exam guideline. So know the law, it's true or nothing. Now, these are the example where on which the Pascal law uh, applies. In an exam, they will say, give two or three examples uh, of the Pascal laws. Now, we've got the bulldozers. We know the bulldozer system. We know the hydraulic brakes. I, uh, we mentioned the other side. We know the dentist chair, because it's what we always mention, dentist chair. The lift that we use, then the car jacks, they use this, apply, they apply this law. Now, hydraulic lift. Let me explain the, how does the principle work. If you look at this uh, uh, um, picture, we've got a force that has been applied here, which is F there. And then we've got the area of the pistil there. This is pistil. This is an area. Once you have a force and area, we think of what? We think of? The pressure. So we know that pressure is force over area. So it means, in other words, there is a pressure that has been exerted on this pistol, which is pistol number one. Now, pistol number one, there is a pressure, which is the force at an area. So now, that pressure, when it's been transmitted to pistol number two, must be equal. That says the law. So in other words, from here, when it's transmitted there, which is P still 2, it has what as well? It has the force, which is this force, and it has what? The area, which is the pressure. It means, therefore, pressure is, uh, uh, pressure 1 is equal to pressure 2. This is Pascal law. That is where you get Pascal law. Pressure 1 is equal to pressure 2. So this is Pascal law that we are going to apply here. If we know for the fact that the formula for a pressure, pressure 1 is equal to F1 over area 1, then pressure 2 is equal to F2 over area 2. Now, what does the law say? It says the the force that is applied on this, or the pressure that is applied on uh, 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 pressure one must be equal to the, for the, the pressure that is applied to pressure two. So in other words, it's going to be P1 equals to P2 because they should be equal. Are, are we together? Now, therefore, we know for the fact this, we know this can be this. And then we know this can still be equals to or this. So this is the formula that we are going to apply when we calculate the hydraulic lift. So this formula, this one, is very important. 
we are going to use it when we calculate what? Hydraulic lifts from this diagram and from what? Pascal's law. So I was trying to explain Pascal's law that the pressure, this, this pressure, this pressure, pressure one is equals to what? The pressure two that we have there. When it is transmitted from the pressure, this one, equally to the pressure, this one. And what you must remember is that the area for pressure two or the area for pressure two, yes, or the pistol number two is greater than the area for pistol number one. In other words, area two is greater than area one. You can see, this side we've got the pistol, the bigger pistol, this side we've got a, a smaller pistol. And the force ex, uh, 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 is the same. This force of pistol two is greater than the force in pistol one because everything there is bigger, this one is smaller. So this we need to know. So this is the, equ uh, the equation that we need to know. As I've alluded there, this is the equation that is very important. You'll get it in your data sheet, in an exam, that you need to know. What is it that you need to know in this uh, uh, formula or in this uh, equation? In, uh, is that you may be required to calculate the force F1, or you may be required to calculate F2, or you may be required to calculate the area or a radius, it depends. Right, now this is what you, we are going to apply now to calculate this. Now let us apply it. Example number four. A figure below shows a force of 200 Newton is exacted on what? On a small piece, uh, um, um, a pistol, this area is 200 Newton, is exerted in, uh, in this one. Then, the, we were given what? The radius, the, the radius of 10, right? The radius we're given is 10 centimeters. And then, at the large pistol, we're given the radius of 50, which is, this one, remember we've got the force and the area. Now, the area that we are given, uh, the radius that we are given is this one. Now, they want us to do what? Calculate the upward force exerted by, um, experienced by the larger pistol. So they want us to calculate the force at the larger pistol, which is which is force number two. Now, we are going to do it quick. We have F1, area one equals to F, to area two, right? They want us to calculate it. What do we have? We've got the force of this one. We've got what? The radius of this one. Now, there's a snake. We've got the radius, not what? The area. No, we need to calculate the area very quick. Now, even this side, we are given only the radius. Now, what is the formula for a radius? Radius is, I mean, sorry, the area is equals to, um, area is equals to, pi times r squared, right? Now we are given is 3,14 multiplied by, what is the radius given? Now we're given in centimeter, centimeters, we need to change it into millimeters, then it's going to be um, 10 divided by 100, then it gives us 0, 0,1, 0, 0,1, right? Now, don't forget the square, all right? It gives you, right, um, three, so the answer here is zero comma zero six one five four, four, all right? Same applies, you've got this area, which is R squared, then it gives you um, multiply by, then you, you need to change 50, divide by 100, then it's 0 0.5, right? You put the square there, then what is going to be the answer? Then 
it's 3,14 multiplied by 0, 0,5 squared. Then it gives you 0, 0,785. Right, you've got this now. You need to go there and, and calculate. How are we going to do it? You've got the force of 200 divided by the area of area number one. It's 0, 0,06154. That multiplied by, then you've got here F that they want you to calculate over. You've got the answer there. It's 0, 0,7. Eight, five. Right, this is how we are going to do it. Here, we are going to cross multiply this one and cross multiply that one. We are going to have, uh, sorry. Then we are going to have uh, you cross multiply is going to be This one and that one. It's going to be two multiplied by seven, eight, five, then equals to the other side is going to be 0, 0,06. Um, right, let us quickly go back and, and, and check the answer. Oh, our time, all right. Right. many pages all right but the, the, our, our answer is going to be uh, what we have calculated there which is two zero zero and then the other and uh, the answer that we, we got is going to be um, I just let us move a bit and then zero uh, six six, four, right? F, then you multiply the two then to calculate what F, all right? Then if you multiply this, then it's going to be 200 multiplied by seven, eight, five. It gives you one, five, seven hundred, uh, thousand. Now you are going to divide by what you don't want, which is this one, 6, 0, 6, 6, 4. Then you get your answer with your calculator there. Then you shall have calculated what? F2, because they want you to calculate what? F2. Then if you divide that one by this one, you get the answer for F2. Now. Uh, this is how you calculate because you are given one answer. So now uh, um, we are having these examples or exercises that you can do at home. These are your example, I mean exercise. You can do this exercise following the procedure that we did, which is uh, calculating what is needed there. They say state the principle and then you are up, want to calculate what the force there, and then all these marks they apply there. Now, in closing, I want to say success is not an accident. It is hard work, perseverance, learning, studying, sacrifice, and most of all, it is what doing or learning to do. This is from Pele who have uh, uh, motivating us. I'm trying to motivate learners that if you want to succeed, it does not come just in an accident. You must work hard, 
you must persevere, you must learn, you must study, you must sacrifice. That is very important. You must sacrifice. All of all, love what you are doing or learning to do. I thank you very much. Yeah.